Hi guys, this is Hotel Sierra Zero, Zulu Papa X-Ray. This video is uh, specifically made for all the stations living in North America. So it has to do with stations that are living in the United States, Canada, even Mexico and the Caribbean. Um, I just want to explain you why basically it happens very often that you hear maybe stations from Southeast Asia and we do not respond to your call. And it all has to do with the QRM level that we have here in Southeast Asia. And let me explain you what is the cause of the QRM, where it comes from. And I had a lot of discussions about it with a lot of amateur radios. Um, and I came to the conclusion that the QRM is generated uh, by machinery coming out of China. So basically, this is man-made QRM that is causing interference on the entire uh, let's say 12 and 10 meter band uh, for us here in Southeast Asia. So the stations or countries that are affected with this QRM are probably going to stay uh, going to be countries that are surrounding Thailand. So it's going to be Thailand, Laos, Myanmar, Vietnam, uh, probably also parts of Indonesia, Singapore, Malaysia, etc. So um, you probably hear hear us calling, but we're not responding your call. And it's just because we cannot hear you. Uh, if you look at my waterfall here, uh, you can see it looks like a very wild sea. And uh, the cause of the curum, in my opinion, uh, I tried to figure it out for many years, uh, is probably from RF welding and RF drying machine. Let me just uh, first explain you how I came to the conclusion that this is because of machinery in China. Uh, I have been operating in different locations here in Thailand uh, and uh, from any location I've been operating the QRM is the same and the QRM level is the same. Uh, also I've uh, been in this QTH here for a while, I've got a nice uh, 7 element Yagi and I have a nice uh, height of antenna and I'm living on the edge of a small village and it happens often that there is a power outage and of course when there is a power outage as an amateur radio i just want to know how the qrm level is when there is no power in the vicinity so when the entire town is uh, uh, without any power uh, there shouldn't be any qrm right so uh, i take the car battery connect my hermes light connect my laptop and i see exactly the same qrm here so it is not caused by local interference it is coming from somewhere else so um, why am I coming to the conclusion, another reason uh, that it is caused by RF welding and RF drying machines coming out of China is because during Chinese New Year, uh, which this year happened to be around the uh, 29th of January, um, the QRM level just went straight down. So if you go to one of my live streams around that period, like let's say 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31 January 2025, or even up to uh, February the uh, 3rd of uh, 2025, you will see that the QRM level is relatively low and there is not a wild sea to be um, seen on the uh, 10 meter band. So basically these machines, uh, they are shut down during the season, people are going back home and the factories are shutting down their factory facilities or their manufacturing facilities and this is where the QRM level is very, very low. And I had this discussion with a couple of stations that are in the vicinity of China here and they're exactly experiencing the same thing. So what are RF drying and RF welding machines? Let me just uh, bring up the uh, browser here, or let me just maybe uh, bring up also, first of all, my uh, Aussie world map. Uh, and when I start the Aussie world map, this is how the world looks like from this location here. And you can clearly see that we have to beam over the North Pole to reach North America and the uh, headings for the beam ranges from more or less 340 degrees up to about uh, let's say uh, uh, 40 degrees. Um, and China is right here, it's about one hop away from Thailand. So we are about one hop away from uh, the uh, region of China. And this is where all these machinery are being used and let me just uh, quit um, the Aussie world map and bring up my uh, browser. And if uh, you look uh, on the browser, let me just bring it up for you. There you go. Um, I am on one of these uh, websites of 
the manufacturers of these kind of machines. And this is a pretty small machine, so it's a 10 to 15 kilowatt uh, RF uh, uh, sealer. So this is an RF uh, welding machine. And if you look at the specifications, you can see that the power amplifier is specifically made for the 27.12 megahertz. So these are the MOSFET, uh, MOSFETs that they're using in this machinery. It's not the specific frequency it's going to emit. It's just the power amplifier is centralized around 27.120 uh, um, megahertz. So basically, um, it will re it will work around this frequency or in this range. But we use the same MOSFETs for our uh, LD MOS amplifiers, so uh, they probably use the same uh, power amplifiers. These LD MOS amplifiers, or uh, let we say, let me rephrase it, the uh, LD MOS transistors are specifically made for these frequencies, uh, but it can be used for any frequency, as you know, uh, because we use them in our machine in our amplifiers as well. So, um, if I go to Gemini and I ask what is the power of such a machine, um, the small portable units are using between 1 and 5 kilowatts. you got medium-sized industrial machines that range from 10 kilowatts to 100 kilowatts, and then you have these large-scale uh, machines that exceed 100 kilowatts and even reach several hundreds of kilowatts. Well, <laughs> I don't have to make any picture that even if you don't use an antenna, but you're using machinery that can uh, go up to a couple of hundreds of kilowatts, that this QRM will bleed over, especially if the cage of Faraday around these machines are not uh, RF-proof. So it will eventually bleed over. And this is what we hear on the... Uh, 10 meter band, 11 meter band, 12 meter band, etc. So if you look at, uh, I, I tried to find um, the QRM um, recordings from these machines, but I cannot find any specific recordings because I think the industry just tries to keep this uh, silent. They don't want to show exactly how these machinery actually sound like on a uh, receiver. But uh, I found using the perplexity uh, artificial intelligence uh, search engine uh, that uh, it says on a waterfall spectrum uh, display, the RF heating interference appears as wobbly peaks that drift towards uh, downwards in the frequency, sometimes referred as hooks or fish hooks or sweepers. Okay. And then the buzzing sound can be sporadic, uh, resembling a Morse code, which I haven't heard so far, but it sounds more like uh, QRM. Um, and uh, uh, let me just uh, go here. Uh, and this is a whole list of information I've been going through. And uh, for me, it's very clear that when I just bring up uh, the uh, receiver again, do that. And you look at the QRM, uh, you can see that uh, currently you have these uh, spikes here. So it looks like hooks. So when you when I when I bring up my uh, my mouse, you can see that it's like a hook. Okay, and this is like hook. So it's like a sweep that's over the frequency here. There is a big one, uh, and it looks like a wild C. So if you listen to it, this is how it looks like. It's really noisy. Look at this. Have you seen it? So I've I've heard many stations telling me like, hey, uh, these are uh, atmospheric. Yeah, come on, this is not atmospheric. Uh, how can you explain the fact that the QRM goes away when uh, Chinese New Year is there? How can you explain that uh, the QRM is very high when I turn the beam towards China from any location here in Southeast Asia? So if I if I just turn the beam, okay, I got the beam headings right now at 30 degrees. I'm going to do a 360 degree turn with my antenna. So I'm going to turn it clockwise. And I am at uh, six, 50 degrees now, 60 degrees. And when I'm at 90 degrees, you will see that the QRM level will slowly go down because I will have it on the side of the beam. So when I turn the beam towards 120 degrees, this is how the QRM goes down. You can see how calm the uh, pen adapter comes and uh, becomes and how the uh, waterfall becomes quiet. I'm at 180 degrees, so I'm turning with my back to, the, uh, to China right now, 210. 
Uh, I'm now at uh, 240 degrees. So, perfect. No QRM at all. Hmm, how should that be possible? So this is 270 degrees. And this is 300 degrees. So this, uh, in there you go, I'm at 315 degrees. This is the direction I should be heading towards Europe. So Europe is okay. I can work Europe without too much of an interference from China. But when I go, I'm at 360 degrees now. You can see the QRM level just going right up like a, like a wild sea. And I'm back to the position where I was before. I'm uh, now turning back to uh, 30 degrees. Let me turn off my uh, my rotator. But for me, it's very clear. This is caused by uh, RF welding and RF drying machines. So how can you recognize RF drying and RF welding machines? To all the information that I've gathered so far, for me, it's very, very clear that these spikes here, like this one over here, okay, these hooks here, these are probably RF welding machines. So when they weld something, it's spot welding. So they're going to weld it. Zzzz, up, and then the welding is done. So, and this spikes here with a hook, for me, are very clear. These are RF welding machines, or sometimes without a hook, like this one where we are right now. This is like a hook. You can see it. So if I follow them, if I see one spike, like... Let's see here, this one, for example. There you go, I'm just following along. Okay, it goes away. There you are. Uh, these are RF weldings. Let me just go uh, up and down the bands. Look at this. Let me go to the free band frequency. And here you see much more of these, what we call RF drying machines. For me, these are RF drying machines. When they go slow and they are long, these are RF drying machines. Because it takes longer to dry something. So it's not like spot welding, where you weld something and then you stop the uh, transmission, the RF. This is more like uh, RF drying. These uh, machines, in my humble opinion, are not stabilized. There is no PLL, there is no stabilization in there. So it's all over the band. And how far does it reach over the band? Let me just very quickly go to 26 megahertz. Same story. A lot of QRM. 25. And here you can see that it starts to go down. Okay. So we can barely hear them. But sometimes, if you, even on, on other bands like... Uh, 15 meter, for example, you might see these spikes too, so there's a station here, but you can uh, see these spikes too. Sorry, I, I have some some QRM here uh, caused by a, uh, um, a Wi-Fi repeater. Uh, I know it. I just turn it off sometimes when I am getting QRM from it. So, and you can see, you see here, this is this is not this is not you know as far as I understand now exactly the same QRM this is a radar exactly the same QRM as the RF drying and RF welding machines I can hear on uh, the uh, on the 10 meter bands and even here on uh, the uh, 20 meters sometimes you can hear them bleeding over okay so there you go if I go back to 10 meters look at this it's unbearable. It's very hard to work the US. So if I go to 29 megahertz, same story, a lot of QRM, but it is getting less intense. Okay. Let me just zoom out a little bit so you have a better view of what's going on. Okay. So the same story on uh, uh, on 29 megahertz. And when I go to 30 megahertz, you can start to see that the frequency becomes more and more clear. Now, to be honest with you, my antenna is intended for uh, 10 to 20 meters. So when I go to 30 megahertz, I'm also going beyond the scope of the receive uh, of my antenna. So maybe it's not completely fully correct. So because I hear it up to 32, 33 megahertz as well here in uh, Thailand. So uh, what are your alternatives for Thailand? Well, here you go. Uh, I think uh, what you should uh, try to understand is uh, maybe an option is going to be in uh, long path to Thailand. 
Uh, there is some long path propagation to Thailand, and the long path propagation for me is basically around 12 UTC up to 14 UTC long path on 20 meters. So if you consider to work uh, Thailand or any station in Southeast Asia, just consider beaming long path to us. Uh, so we have long path propagation on 20 meters around 12 to 14 UTC. Many stations in the US, they do not think that there is long path propagation. They probably don't uh, really beam often long path to uh, this region, but you need to beam over the South Pole if you want to reach us. Uh, there is a net going on every uh, day on uh, 14.207 with uh, Kilo Echo 5 Echo Echo. And I can hear Kilo Echo 5 Echo Echo very well uh, here in Thailand almost every day. Uh, let me just uh, go and you can see that there is also USA here. Uh, let me just uh, uh, go to the... Okay, let me see here. So you see we have the Philippines and here you have the USA. This is on 20 meter and you can see also on 2100 UTC I have uh, the USA on 20 meters. So this is more like short path. But I need to wake up early morning here, so I need to uh, uh, stay awake at night to work you guys. Uh, and there is also a 15 meter. Uh, let me see. So what I will do later on when I'm back home in Belgium in a month or so is just analyze the different contacts that I've made and uh, tell you what uh, is the frequencies that I've been using to work the United States uh, and give you a little bit of a rough overview on when you can expect uh, propagation from uh, Thailand into the United States with the different bands. Okay, I hope this free, uh, uh, video is useful. If you have any comments, suggestions, whatever, please leave me a note in the comment section. I would greatly appreciate your input as well. 70 trees, and thanks a lot for tuning in. And I hope this um, really gives you a better idea why you do not get any response on your calls from Southeast Asia. 70 trees. This is Hotel Sierra Zero, Zulu Papa X-Ray, a.k.a. Oscar November 7, Oscar Fox Fox, now signing off.